The motor's in the car. It's shiny and red. Hmm. Well, we got some bolts on the front bit here. There are four points here. One, two, three, four. So I'm guessing that if I make up some sort of mount, maybe a, a big round collar that comes up to here. This is the engine mount off the uh, old petrol engine and a bit of metal will come up and sit in a bush that'll be here. Get a bit of metal and just go chink, chonk, straight down to that. And uh, that should take care of holding the weight and uh, because it'll have a rubber bushing in there, you know, it'll have a little bit of give like that so it won't shake itself to bits. And we'll probably put a mount that goes up the front to take care of what's called the new word for me, torsion. Hmm. Torsion is the word for today. It moves that way. We need something to stop it moving that way And that would be a torque bar that we'll put in maybe to that mount there Let's get these engine mounts going Done. Mm. I Guess who's come over today with a nice plate to go on the end of this motor inertia man Rob look at it You've got the holes in the right place which is top We've got to make up the bit that covers this gap here. Something that goes from there to there and has rubber in it. So it will be bushed correctly because uh, the more original bits we can use in building this stuff, the easier it's going to be to get past the engineer at the end of it who has to give it a tick before we can get a blue slip and then get it on the road. I'm a little bit nervous. Rock and roll. One very simplified motor mount. All it's got to do is um, hold the motor there and get past the engineer, so I'm going to prime it up and... Bob's your uncle. Another Inertia Man minute. Rob has tools I've never even seen before. Tricks of the trade. Here's a uh, automatic centre punch. It saves you one hand. You just line him up on the dot. Instead of having a hammer in one, you just line it up. Done. Donsky. Done. Center punch. Automatic. Magic. Let's go have a cup of coffee. Get the brew going. Got another love letter from avparts.com. From the States, these things. No electric car is complete without the chrome electric emblem. I don't want to take it out of the wrapping until I put it on the car. So uh, that'll go next to the Capri sign, electric, Capri, and I got one for each side as well. Top. This is called the pot box. The cable that usually goes from the accelerator pedal to the carburetor gets hooked up to here. So when you put your foot on it, it does that. And that's just controlling a little potentiometer, just like a, a volume control on an amplifier. There are two wires out the other side. So that's what I like about wiring this thing up. It's real easy, two wires. Two wires. You hook that into the thing called the controller, and depending on where this is, that controls how much voltage from your big battery pack goes to the electric motor. Simple. And I've also got uh, brake vacuum pump switches. What these things do, remember I was talking about the uh, little vacuum pump and the uh, aluminium drink container? Well, that vacuum pump doesn't have to be on all the time. What happens is it uh, creates a vacuum, you know, <laughs> then the drink container holds a certain amount of vacuum. Well, when that drink container's got enough vacuum, you can turn off the vacuum pump. You don't want something going all the time. That's where this little guy comes in. It's got a little input there, and it can tell when you're getting to a certain amount of vacuum pressure. And it will switch off the vacuum pump when it gets to that amount of pressure. And that's all it is, just a little switch, little hole for your vacuum to go in, and Bob's your uncle vacuum pressure switch, so now I have all the bits to resurrect the brakes. Between the uh, $150 vacuum pumps from the States 
this, uh, what is it, like $30, $35 vacuum switch and uh, a $7 drink container and some hose. So let's talk instrumentation. The way that you usually have instruments working in the, you know, a normal petrol car, of course, is you have your fuel gauge, uh, battery gauge, temperature gauge. Well, you don't really need a temperature gauge with an electric car because there's nothing really, there's no fluids there getting hot. But what you do need to know is how much voltage is in your battery pack and how much current you're drawing and subsequently from those two things you can figure out how much distance, you know, how far you have to get before you run out of voltage. Because, you know, hey, the downside is it'll only have, in my case, about 120 Ks in the EV Capri. Most people get a, an amp gauge that just shows current, current drawn and a voltage gauge which shows, you know, obviously the voltage drawn or being drawn at the time. Usually they're two sets of figure eight numbers and by calculating those two together you can figure out your current draw or your state of charge which sometimes is abbreviated SOC, state of charge, and you can figure out, you know, pretty much how much juice you got left before you gotta go plug back into the wall. I decided I didn't want to spend all the money on separate uh, instruments. I have an old palm tungsten tea. One of these old beasties. I reckon you can get them on eBay for about 99 bucks now. This is a color jobby. And uh, I found on uh, the internet a bit of software by a guy called Peter Ola. You can download his software, chuck it in your Palm Pilot. It doesn't have to be, you know, a reasonably newish one like this. It can be one of your $50 secondhand models. You chuck it in this. If you plug, plug from here to the bottom of from your Palm to a particular battery monitoring system called the Xantrex Link 10, which I think I found on, in the States for about 200 bucks, which is still cheaper than separate instrumentation, you can have this be your instrumentation. There you go. So let me just get that into um, uh, record settings, input source. Input source, serial port, simulation. There's my instrumentation. Top is the uh, voltage, the bottom is current. And then you've got these bar graphs here, which for you calculate state of charge, how far you've got to go. That pretty much solves the instrumentation issue. Right there like that. But you can go one step even further. These things have wireless networking called Bluetooth. And if I get a little dongle about that big called an RS-232 to Bluetooth adapter over the net, you can buy them for about 40 bucks. Plug that into my battery monitoring system put this on the dashboard, Velcro it to the dashboard. I don't even have to wire it up. And I've got all of that. That's pretty cool. Gets cooler. These things have removable SD cards. You can actually store your trip on the card and print it out so it comes up like this. You've pretty much got an electric map of your whole trip so you can figure out where your, you know, where your power's going. It's kind of an interesting, cool little thing. No normal battery monitoring system does that. If you have a meter on the dashboard that has a needle on it, shows you how many amps, you don't get all that. So uh, I've actually found that this is pretty much about the same price or a little bit cheaper to put together. Hope it works. 